the desert shaman here. Some people call me Thunder. I'm going to do a video today on shamanic drumming or drumming that can be used in a shamanic manner or a in the manner of a shaman, let's say. I talked about altered states of consciousness in my last video. Or alternate realities is probably a better term in relationship to uh, shamanism. Alternate realities. And the way that you contact the spirit world or the realm of the unseen is through different ways. Um, and I mentioned psychotropic plants and uh, psychedelics and uh, peyote and ayahuasca and uh, any number of ways, meditation, um, breathing. Well, in that group there, you have to include A number one is drumming, okay? Drumming as a shaman, using a shaman's drum, or any drum. You, you, any drum could be called a shaman's drum if you use it in the proper way. And the way that you do that is if you would like to experience an alternate reality or an, you know, a higher level of consciousness or a different consciousness, or let's say transcending, piercing the veil and going to the other side and communicating with the spirit world, the benevolent, compassionate spirit world, then you use drums to do that. And uh, drums have been used since the beginning of time and, and some of the recorded in you know earliest recorded instances would be the Tuva people in Siberia. And actually that's where the name, like I said in my last video, that's where the name shaman originates from, is in Siberia and with a certain people. And these people wore you know, animal skins and headdresses, and uh, they look kind of Mongolian, and they use drums and rattles in order to get into a different reality or an alternate reality. Drums and rattles, and so if you go back to the North American indigenous people, you find that this is the, the same same blueprint, okay. Shamanism spread all around the world. It, it probably didn't spread. It probably was there already in the various indigenous peoples. But the name shaman spread from Siberia, from that, that locale. But any number of other terms could be applied to what a shaman is or does. A person that works with energy, a person that works with herbs, a person that uses spirits to heal. All these are in basically the same class, like uh, let's say a medicine man in the North American indigenous culture. Or, uh, I mean, they've even, you know, back in, in, in the early days in Europe when they were killing all the so-called, quote, pagans, they were also killing shamans. And anybody that was a shaman, they would label with the term either witch or some other term. Um, because they considered these people throughout history a threat to the established societal norms. So, if you're a threat to the established societal norms, why are they you that way? Because you can get out and look at things, get out of yourself and look at things in a different reality, or get out of the world and look at the world in a different reality. Um, 
And they don't want you looking at the world in a different reality. They don't want people that can step outside the bounds, push the envelope, think outside the box, experience outside the box, see other realities, see other dimensions. Because then they don't have any more control and they, uh, you know, over people like that. Because these people know the powers to be for what they are, or the government, or the established order, or the established religious hierarchy. They see it for what it is, and they know that it's all pretend, basically. And so when you get to that level of consciousness, they don't like you. They don't like you. They don't like people that are free spirit. So shamanism, don't want to get off on a tangent here, but so shamanism has fit into that category, has fit into the category of people they consider dangerous to the social order. When re in reality, if you really want peace and if you really want to transcend the bullshit, Then you go to these alternate realities like, you know, uh, Castaneda talked about in his series of beautiful books. So, I'm going to talk about the drum, like I said, and I have a drum here, and I mentioned, I mentioned in the last video that the way, one of the ways to get into a alternate reality is through using a hoop drum, okay? And so pe people might wonder what a hoop drum is. We'll hope I can get it all on camera here, but this, this is a hoop drum. Now this is a hoop drum made by a major manufacturer. It's a good company, but they're there are hoop drums that you can get that are, you know, ancient, ancient, old, or made by certain indigenous people. But any drum will work. And I did the artwork on here. I put a Thunderbird on here on the drum because that is definitely a power animal of mine, a power being. So when I was talking before uh, about this hoop drum, now you know what it is. And so furthermore, this is what you use to go into a, you could call it a trance state if you wanted to. That's kind of a simplistic term. It really is a, an alternate or an altered, an altered state, an altered state. What does that mean? Well, it takes you out of the state, the hypnotic trance state. If you really want to know the truth, the, the trance that we're in is the one that has been imposed upon us by societal conditioning and brainwashing and propaganda and just w the whole ball of wax. We're in a trance already. But is it a good trance? Is it beneficial? So when you go into another trance state, when you transition from one trance, trance state to the other, that might feel a whole hell of a lot better because there you're in the spirit world and there's no expectations and there's no, uh, you know, uh, I got to depend on anything. Basically, you're a free-floating spirit and you're making contact with all the spirits around you and believe me you can't see them but they're all around you so you ask for benevolent compassionate spirits from the upper world now when i say upper world does that mean heaven no that doesn't mean heaven and when i say lower world does that mean hell no and when i say middle world what does that mean there's three in ancient shamanistic practices, there's a lower world. Well, we know all about there is a lower world. And there's a higher world, and then, you know, and then there's a middle world where it's more neutral. 
Okay. Now the lower world is specifically known for getting your power animal. Usually animals come from the lower world. And that doesn't make them evil or anything like that. That just means there's different worlds. And truth be known, there might be a whole new, I mean, a whole lower world inside the earth here. So these ancient shamans and current shamans weren't far-fetched when they spoke of these things and even painted the three different tiers on their drums, the lower world, the middle world, and the upper world, with beings in those worlds. And then you can go to the petroglyphs out in the southwest and near the Hopi Res and near any kind of reservation, any kind of older place, and you, you know, ancient place, and you will see these same petroglyphs or paintings that are on the walls and cave walls out there, you'll see the same, they are the same ones that are on some of the drums. Now the drum, getting back to the drum as a transition instrument to a higher consciousness, is called an auditory driver. It's called an auditory driver. Think about those terms. Auditory, you're listening to a specific resonance or vibration or you're feeling it so i would call it either an auditory driver and you could add the term sonic driver because when you tune into the drum just like when you tune into a mantra like om that same mantra is in the drum it's everywhere the vibration is everywhere so you use the drum as an auditory driver or a sonic driver. And there's all kinds of tones. Depending on how hard or how soft you hit it. And there's all kinds of areas on the drum, like on the head of the Thunderbird, That's one. Or up here on the rim. So you get acquainted with the drum. You get acquainted with the vibration of the drum. And the sonic part, if you press in, I don't know if you can hear the overtones. So you can see how a steady rhythmic beat in a certain, so many beats per minute, you would have to experiment around with that, but a steady rhythmic monotonous almost, some people would call it, produces overtones profound effect because that's a hypnotic effect. Hear that? That universal uh, vibration is in the drum. I think I'm going to into an altered state of consciousness here. <laughs> uh, and that's the, that's the purpose, see? The purpose is to go into that altered state of consciousness. 
so that you see the world in a different way. Now, I'm sure you just listening to those drum beats might have taken you to another place there. Can you imagine if you did that for 10 minutes straight or half an hour? I want you to imagine that for a minute. Imagine having that, and I could I could take that drum and I could I could play all being a drummer and a jazz drummer. <clears throat> I mean I could take this drum and 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 do all kinds of you know I could I could do all kinds of polyrhythms and things of that nature, but that could very well happen to somebody like me that is in a just a steady thing, and then all of a sudden you'll be holding the drum, and the you'll start channeling spirit, and that spirit will come through your hands and through your <clears throat> arms and everything and kind of take you over and start playing its own thing. It might play a deeply erotic thing or it might play just a straight steady you know tone or it might play play something that makes you want to dance <clears throat> move your hips around just get into it you can dance along with this too you can also uh, chant you can chant Hey, I, you know, you, you, you can, <clears throat> you can do whatever chant. Hey, I, you, we, I, you, you can, you can use chants that you know. You can sing, you can, you know, whatever your talents are, you can uh, do some Tai Chi, float around the room, uh, whatever you want to do you're going to find that when you start getting into the drum <clears throat> and you start making it <clears throat> excuse me a personal friend then as you get more intimate with the drum you attract different kind of spirits and you think about the kind of a spirit of spirit you would like to attract whether it's a goddess energy or uh, the higher, the, the high world or the middle world or the lower world or a spirit animal, whatever animal that you think. And you know, you can, you can also use, you can also go on the channels here on uh, YouTube and you can also find things that are under the heading of shamanic drumming and the, some of it has music with it and some of it is more just drums and some of it has the om along with it so i suggest that you experiment around and you try different things be alone Use the consciousness raising techniques that I have taught you with the breathing and abdominal breathing and chanting the Om or saying or repeating the mantras within and making up your own songs and making up your own chants and just uh, letting go, letting go and letting that drum, letting the hoop drum or whatever drum you choose to use. You might like a rattle or like, might like a bongo. Any drum will work. Bongo drum, a kunga drum, a set of drums. But what you have to do is approach it with the intent that you are using that instrument as a bridge. You're using it as a bridge to... Uh, make a journey uh, to another realm, to another spiritual realm. You can ask for compassionate, beautiful spirits to aid you in your trek in this life. In this. And you know, the thing is, is that 
like I said before in my previous videos, the, the reality, the overlay here that has been imposed upon mankind has almost crippled it. You're basically, you're, you're crippled in a way. You, you find it you find it hard to do natural things like drumming, but you find it easier to go on your iPhone and let that take you on a artificial intelligence reality. An artificial intelligence reality. Whereas you have a million different natural realities and levels and trips that you can go on if you use a drum. And another thing too, the drum is probably the oldest instrument on earth. I think I can safely say that it is the oldest instrument on earth. I think the only exception to that or the only, the close second to that would be the flute, the wooden flute. So if you're, if if you if you are like I am, I I also play Native of Native American flute, wooden flute, and I have done small concerts in nightclubs and stuff with dr just drums, and I pick the drummers and flute me playing flute, or I might stop playing the flute for a while and get in with the drummers and lead them somewhere, kind of like a Pied Piper. Now, if you want to have peace of mind and tranquility and journey into places besides this world that is in imbalance, it's not balanced. You need to balance, you need to ground, you need to go back to primal sources. Okay, it's, it's actually... The drum can be closely connected to a primal urge or the prime mover or the sexual urge or the kundalini or the uh, vibrant energy, the goddess energy, the god, the Shiva Shakti. It is a good way to connect to overcome problems, to dissolve psychological and mental and spiritual and physical problems. That's what shamans do. They heal. They heal themselves. Got to heal yourself first. You have to go through your own little healing process. But does that mean, and I won't exclusively say first, I'll just say, the shaman goes through a continual cathartic healing process in his life or her life. And, but by accessing other realms and other uh, spirit helpers, spirit guides would be a good term. That seems to be a rather innocuous term, spirit guide. Kind of a new age term. If you access that, then you, you have a leg up on overcoming uh, anything you want. In other words, people think that they're walking around with no friends or very few friends or um, acquaintances or people that help them out. I got news for you people. They're all around you. They're all around you. You may not see them right now because you haven't altered your consciousness enough or you may not feel them. See, I'm, I'm kind of a... It depends on what, which one of your senses that maybe you're more tuned into. Like, for instance, I have a, a real easy time of feeling the energy around me. Feeling the touch, feeling the presence, feeling the warm vibrational glow, feeling feeling all kinds of uh, tantric feelings and all kinds of feelings. I feel that readily. The, the vision thing with me, uh, 
took time to be truthful with you. It took time, although there have been psychedelic moments when it didn't take any time at all. I'm talking about easing in from a natural, or let's say a non-drug state, maybe just a uh, meditative state. That has taken a little bit longer with me, but now it is, is very, it's getting very strong to where uh, not only am I feeling things, but I can, in, in, a, in a darkened room, and you always want to be, if you can, if you want to contact or see, let's say, glowing orbs that are spirits or uh, energy radiating out from, let's say, the middle of the room or... Uh, you might see slight movement to the left or the right and then it come into view and then leave real quickly. Or you may see undulations. If you want to see those kind of things, it's, it's a little bit more easy, let's say, or more, uh, you have more facility with that if you are in a darker room or just a pitch black room or if you don't like pitch black, you can use a candle or a night light or whatever. But it has to be dark enough for you to see the veil and to step through that. Okay. And you're stepping through it with your mind. You're piercing the veil. You're 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 all of a sudden things are becoming apparent that hey, you know, this is just the reality we see is just kind of like a curtain, an undulating curtain. And the more you get into this, the walls breathe, they separate, everything turns into patterns. You can go to all kinds of different places and see that this ain't all there is, folks. And so what does that do in the long run? Well, in the long run, it, and in the short run, it, it, uh, it's a big relief. It's a big relief. Because then you go, oh my God, there is so much more to this than I ever thought. And not only is there so much more, but it's becoming apparent to me on a physical, mental, and spiritual level, on all levels. I am actually transcending. I am. <sighs> Going into a realm which some people, you know, uh, have compared near-death experiences to this. Well, yeah, there's a lot of similarities, except it doesn't have to be like that. But some people now, you know, uh, depending on your facility, depending on what senses that you're tuned into, what are predominant? Is it hearing? Is it being able to hear things? Is it being able to see things in your mind's eye? Is it be, being able to just feel sensations on your body? Doesn't matter because if you, if, if you start practicing one, then all the senses eventually start coming in and going, oh, well, feeling can do that, seeing can do that too, or hearing can do that too. So don't rule anything out with this. Don't rule anything out and uh, practice this. Get a drum. You know, get something that sounds like a drum. Get a mallet, make your own. I just say go and, you know, go on Amazon or whatever and invest a little money and get some kind of hoop drum or tribal drum or shamanic drum. I'm sure if you type in those things, they'll pop up. Or if you know somebody that is a, an indigenous person or know a drum maker or know somebody that is a group that is into, like, say, a drum circle, a drum circle is a beautiful thing. I've had the best experiences of my life playing in the park with huge drum circles. I mean, the power there is palpable. It's palpable, and, and, and you want to talk about tribal. But you don't need a drum circle. Uh, you, you, can, you can start this at home. And start now. What are you waiting for? You know, do whatever you feel uh, makes you comfortable to be able to get into this, you know. If you need to uh, 
have a little cannabis or whatever, whatever, or or nothing at all. It doesn't matter or whatever, uh, whatever means and tools. Everything is a tool when you get right down to it. You're just using a tool to get to a certain place. So I don't want to uh, exhaust this subject. I might want to retouch on it later and. Uh, might wanna. I'm gonna probably do be doing uh, things that make me feel most comfortable on YouTube. Hell, I don't care if I have a thousand followers or ten followers. Those of you who are here are supposed to be here, and those of you who get this are supposed to get it. I don't know if I could handle the multitudes. It's like uh, it's like that book by Jonathan, uh, no Richard Bach. Uh, he he wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. He also wrote Adventures of a, a Reluctant Messiah, <laughs> about a barnstorming pilot that didn't really want to be a center of attraction as the a sort of messiah okay so my point is i don't know if i could handle thousands of people uh if they find if they find out what i have to offer and that in it and it appeals to them then all the better so i'll leave it there today uh i don't want to don't want to make this too long and uh if you would like to support this channel uh you can always Give me a thumbs up and a like and all that good shit. And um, also there's my books at Spirit of Crazy Horse, which will be in the show notes below. It will be in the show notes. So, And, you know, if you go to Spirit of Crazy Horse, there's a place on there to, like, push the donation button. And if you do, you'll get a free book, a free PDF book, electronic book, one of my books. So anyway, until the next time, until the next lesson, until the next uh, speech by thunder, I'm out of here. Adios.